God. So how was your day? Uh, I, I went to, to that place with the, the reanimated corpses they didn't show. It was, they're old people. And I don't know how, how it is out there. It was very overcast today. So it was dark all day. And it was basically pitch black by five o'clock here. Because then it was just overcast. So, Did it start you know, to old, rain? Old, is it raining there yet? Not yet, not yet. It's gonna, it's gonna start tonight and then yeah. tomorrow. Hey, buddy. You know when you get into a fist fight with the wall, the wall always wins. I have given this speech to an army of my male patients over nearly 40 years working as a healthcare provider in alcohol and drug detox wards, psychiatric hospital, outpatient clinics over the past five decades. It's called a boxer's break, even though orthopedic surgeons agree that no prize fighter, no real professional boxer, has ever suffered one. It can invariably be traced back to when some frustrated, infuriated male between ages 17 and 70 decides on taking his anger out on some nearby cement wall with his fists, pounding his knuckles against an inanimate object which feels no pain snapping third and fourth metacarpals, at times even driving these snap bones right out through the skin of his hand's dorsal surface. A common sight of young men wearing a plaster or fiberglass cast from wrist to fingers is the only outcome of these fist fights with the unyielding surfaces. Parenthetically speaking, women never seem to suffer so-called boxer's break. Nobody hanging out in Union Square Park with the alcohol and drug out of legions to homeless and big night who breaks up the unending tedium of the great COVID-19 virus pandemic lockdown of 2020 by watching the daily unending stream of bum fights as the sole live entertainment still available in New York City during the interim. Bald-headed, stocky young drifters sit sprawled across a park bench beneath the great oak tree of Union Square East, his pumpkin-sized dome lolling to the side at a completely impossible angle now passed out after a day's binge on freebase cocaine. He suddenly comes to his senses, starts searching for his wheeled suitcase, bursting at the seams, containing the sum total of all his worldly possessions, ripping it open, flinging the contents in every direction on the ground. Somebody stole my fucking cell phone! Who stole my fucking cell phone? Would you use motherfuckers got my fucking phone? He goes from one of his semi-comatose cohorts to another, menacing his cronies, threatening them, accusing them of pilfering his goods while he was still passed out in drug-induced slumber. Yo, man, this crackhead been smoking crack all day, and now he want to accuse everybody of thieving off of him? He's fucking crazy. He's fucking fucked up. His buddies all get off the park benches and head off in every direction, anticipating imminent violence. And another round of the daily bum fight routine. Soon the victim is left all alone, bereft of his fellow undomiciled friends. So now he turns his anger onto the array of inanimate objects in his immediate vicinity. First, attempting to uproot a close by ornamental fir tree. Then, after he was unsuccessful at ripping out the pine, he turned his wrath on the cement planter that it was rooted in, kicking at it full force with his sneakered foot. Some motherfucker stole my fucking cell phone. I want it back now. Hey, bro, when you get into a fight with the tree, the tree always wins. Your foot always loses. Somebody stole my Obama phone. A reference to that rudimentary little black cell phone provided free to recipients of social service, food stamps, public assistance, Medicaid, Social Security, or the various local Human Resources Administration. Somebody stole my fucking Obama phone! Frustrated in his arbocidal attempted murder at the miniature Scotch pine in his concrete planter, he focuses on a newly planted yellow locust sapling, rips it out of its cement planter, flings it out onto the sidewalk of Union Square Park East, finally proceeds down the street, tossing the heavy-duty plastic city parks department trash cans out into the dedicated bike lanes of the avenues impeding cyclist traffic. All the while, the blue flower pots that is a platoon of New York City cops sit inside their blue and white Chevy SUVs and do nothing. As the maniacal crackhead 
leaps in front of an oncoming MTA Express bus cruising down Broadway, screaming at the operator and threatening their lives for stealing his Obama phone. Big Mike hobbles over to the uprooted and the ornamental yellow locust factory. And he replants the shrub in the cement flower pot and heads home to self-isolation. The end.